Charles Schuster, and I'm here to help you improve your presentations. I have a few simple rules that will make anyone's presentations more effective. So please join me for the next few minutes as I give some simple rules that will help anyone. Here we go. The first thing is to remember, while you're creating your presentation, where will you be presenting it? That is, what's the venue? How large is it? Think about your audience. How much do they know? And how far back will they be sitting? If they'll be sitting far back, then you will need to make sure your slides are readable. This is a point I will return to in just a moment. Now, depending on your topic, you can be light. You can make a joke. People enjoy jokes, depending, again, on your topic. For most business topics, why not? If you're talking about a serious or tragic topic, of course, humor is inappropriate. But think about your topic, and if possible, add a joke or something humorous, because everyone enjoys humor. Another thing is people love pictures. We remember pictures. Research tells us that people remember pictures more than they remember text. Now, here's a beautiful picture of my country, America and a beautiful picture from Indonesia. Well, this is a lovely woman, Angun the singer, and we love pictures of attractive people. Everyone does. But here's another picture of beautiful Indonesia, the famous Borobudur. Indonesia, like many countries, has wonderful landscapes that are perfect for backgrounds for presentations. Of course, thinking about your audience and your venue, how far are they sitting away? Make it readable. If you look at Steve Jobs introducing the iPhone in 2007, he uses very large and very clear graphics. That's what everyone should do. Remember, think about those people in the back row. Okay, how many bullet points and how many slides. We get tired after about 20 slides. And bullet points, four, five maximum. That's really enough. I strongly recommend shorter PowerPoints with less bullet points. Okay, do you remember clip art? Oh, everybody remembers it and it's ugly. So avoid using it if you can. It looks old fashioned, it looks dated, and we have better alternatives. What alternatives? We have pictures, photographs, artwork. The internet is filled with them. I strongly recommend finding good pictures or artwork. These convey very clear meaning and you don't need clip art. Okay, if you're using a chart or a graph, make sure it's very clear. The labels are clear. If you bring it from Excel into PowerPoint or just use PowerPoint charts, these often the labels are hard to see and small. Make sure they're large enough and clear enough. Okay, do you know those flipping, flopping transitions that PowerPoint has. People don't like those anymore. Don't use them. Save people's time and use quicker transitions. Okay, how about this for a slide? Do you think it's a good one? Can you read this information here? It might be on your exam. It may be important, but it's too small to read. So keep your slides simple, very important, and remember, easy to read.
don't do small slides, small pictures, small print. Too difficult. Okay, now you need to practice. Check your spelling. Check your grammar. That's important because people will notice if you make a spelling error or a grammar error. And it is important to practice your presentation in front of a mirror or with your phone cam or with your friends or family. They would like to see your presentation. Every time you practice, it gets better. Okay, try to look directly at your audience. Many people read the screen, and turning your back to your audience, that's just rude. So make sure you're looking your audience right in the eye, not staring, moving yourself from side to side. Uh, some people like to walk, and that's okay, but it's much more important that you look at your audience than if you look at the screen. Now, sometimes computers are different, projectors are different. So very important to arrive early because you never know what's going to happen. And sometimes emergencies do happen. I'll come back to that point in a moment. Okay, think about your clothes before your presentation. That's another important thing. You wouldn't want to wear your Dirty Burger t-shirt at a nice presentation. Clothes are important. People will judge you on how you're dressed. Very important. And of course, you can ask your audience to silent their phones. That's important. Nothing is more disturbing than a phone going off in the middle of a presentation. Okay, now, it's perfectly acceptable to use notes, but still, you need to look at your audience, okay? You can glance down occasionally. There's a problem sometimes with notes if you're nervous and you're moving. Then people are going to look at your notes. What I recommend is using a tablet so you can look down briefly um, and still look at the audience. Sometimes you can have your laptop in front of you so you can look at your audience and look at your presentation at the same time. Just make sure not to read, and I don't recommend using a hand phone where your eyes are like this or like this, blocking them. Look at your audience, but occasionally your notes are fine. All right, body language. Yes, everyone is nervous. What do you do with your hands? Well, you can use your hands for gestures, of course, point out what's important, or you can simply put them behind your back. That is fine. You don't want to close yourself to your audience. This means I'm making a wall between the audience and myself, and you don't want to do that. You need to be open to your audience. That's important. Okay, so practice again. And has this ever happened to you? It's happened to many people. What are you going to do? This is why you get there early. But sometimes remember, your laptop or your USB can get lost or stolen or broken. So consider, what are you going to do? What's the alternative? I recommend saving your presentation to the internet, to your uh, email, your Gmail, your Hotmail as an attachment and as a draft so it's always there for you on the internet and ready. Okay? I hope this doesn't happen, but sometimes it does. All right. Oops. You have to remember how fast or slow you're going. All right? Think of your audience. Are they native speakers? Are they first semester students? Are they graduate students or professors? Then they know about the information. You don't have to introduce technical terms or jargon. But if they're young or they're not native speakers, you need to slow down. One last thing, an important reminder that everyone needs to remember, and that 
What do these people have in common? Yes, remember to smile. Okay, everyone likes a smile. We're all nervous, but try to remember. Now, if you want additional information, I strongly recommend Nancy Duarte, she's on YouTube, or Steve Jobs, as I mentioned, his introducing the iPhone in 2007 is a fine example of an excellent presentation. That's all for me. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.